So much to talk about on today's Philadelphia 76ers. Now and coming up, a positive injury update for DeAnthony Melton. Are you kidding me? He could return as early as Tuesday night. We have the latest on Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, Tobias Harris, Kyle Lowry, and Robert Covington on the injury front. Also, Philadelphia making a roster move. First, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're going to give you a peek into some of the analytical numbers here behind the scenes that we want to share with the people because over the last 28 days, that's sometimes how we gauge these YouTube numbers. This is watch time from subscribers. So a lot of the watch time is coming from some people externally who haven't subscribed to the show. 63.8% to be exact. 36.2% of the watch time has come from subscribers. You might watch this show all the time because it's aggregated in your YouTube feed, but make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. And if you hit that bell icon, turn on those notifications, you'll get notified whenever we push out a show. If you like the product, whenever we go live, NBA play-in tournament, NBA playoffs, we're going to be doing some watch parties. You don't want to miss our coverage. Thank you in advance for all of your support. Latest injury report for Philadelphia, Joel Embiid going to be questionable for Tuesday's game with the knee. Tyrese Maxey coming off that 52-piece questionable as well. So too is Tobias Harris with the knee. De'Anthony Melton with the back questionable. More on him in a moment. Kyle Lowry questionable also with the knee injury. Robert, Robert Covington remains out. This is very notable here on the De'Anthony Melton front is that he has been upgraded from out to questionable for the 76ers. Tim Botemps of ESPN with this report that DeAnthony Melton, who has played five games in 2024, three since the All-Star break, questionable to play tonight and could return if he's able to consistently play through the back issues that have plagued him in recent months. That would be a big boost for Philadelphia. And with DeAnthony Melton, we've talked about him kind of in this light, that he is to the Sixers almost what Derek White is to the Boston Celtics. Can give you some offense, smart player, good on defense. DeAnthony Melton has that dog mentality too, which I really, really like. He has not played since February 27th. Feels like it's been a lot longer than that. And this back injury, it just has not gone away. Many people who know about back injuries, who suffer from back injuries, you're all too familiar with kind of the symptoms of that and just the elongated process of it. He's played in just three games since January 15th because that back was flaring up on him and that chance to play tonight against the Detroit Pistons. When he has been on the floor this year, impactful on both ends, I think he's another good guard to have in this guard rotation. I don't think it should take away from the minutes that Kyle Lowry is getting. I like what Nick Nurse has been doing with some guard-heavy lineups. At times, we've seen Tyrese Maxey, Kyle Lowry, DeAnthe or uh, uh, campaign all on the floor together. You have to wonder if DeAnthony Melton is going to be a part of that as well. 11.5 points per game this year. Pretty good three-point numbers. 39.1% from the overall field isn't great, but the three-point numbers kind of supplement that a little bit. And even if Melton does not play tonight, you have to feel good, and you have to look at it as a good sign as we just look ahead that he's progressing a little bit. Doesn't sound good for Robert Covington. And we've also talked about him a lot that – Look, if he comes back, is he even going to be a part of the playoff rotation? I don't think Philadelphia really needs him, continues to be listed out, and there's no return date here. At this point, might not play again this year. Even if he returns from his injury soon, who are you taking off the floor to put Robert Covington on the floor for? I'd rather see Ricky Council get the minutes like he did the other night against San Antonio compared to a player like Robert Covington. And then Tobias Harris, he's missed his last three games with the knee injury. I want to see what Nick Nurse does with the starting five because the Maxi Lowry, Oubre, Batum, and Bede lineup chip, it's been really good. We had this conversation last week. I would bring Tobias Harris off the bench. I don't care 
that he's making damn near $40 million. I don't care if he's a rhythm scorer and you owe it to him to be in the starting five. Frankly, I've seen enough. I've had enough. And I think the Maxi Lowry, Oubre, Batum, and Bede lineup, it's scratching the surface of what it could be, and I like it as a playoff lineup. Yeah, and we'll definitely have a video coming out closer to when the playoffs start, talking about the whole rotation, who should play and whatnot. But I wanted to talk about Tobias here because this – lineup specifically of Maxi, Lowry, Oubre, Batum, and Bede, it has everything, right? Obviously, you got Embiid, now he's getting back in the lineup. Players like Batum and Lowry, and they play so well off him, especially Batum. I, I think Batum, his value is so much better yeah. than a player like Tobias is with Embiid because, you know, Batum can hit those quick corner threes. He's going to move the ball. He's smart. He's going to play defense. Tobias isn't really going to do all those things to that same level. We've seen Oubre more athletic and more explosive than Tobias. And then Maxi Lowry, that backcourt, you might not think it when you look at their, the size of those two players, but they play very well together, actually. And the minutes we've seen of Lowry with Embiid hasn't been a whole lot, but he's looked good with Embiid as well. So I don't see if this lineup continues to play well together, how you can break it up. And you know what? Maybe Tobias can find something in the playoffs coming off the bench going against second unit guys. And why would you break it up? If they're showing so much potential and they're showing growth, and they're showing just great numbers as a collective five. Again, I just don't care about how Tobias Harris feels at this point. He's made plenty of money. He's been awful this year. I'm going with the starting five. That gives me the best chance to win, and I think that starting five gives them the best chance to win. And Bede Maxey, day-to-day injuries here. It's more just maintenance at this point. Joel Embiid did not play against the San Antonio Spurs. Max, he did, and he drops 52 points. You just want them to be right for the playoffs. You have a good idea of what they both look like, the shape that they're both in, and how they can work off one another at this point, even after just a couple of games together since Embiid came off that knee. Lowry, more veteran rest than a true injury for him. It's another player who you want to be fresh, and he's playoff season. He's playoff experienced, and after missing Sunday, I expect him to play again tonight to kind of get the wheels in motion. So predict the score of tonight's game against Detroit. We get it. This video is coming out a little bit later. You might be seeing this during the game, after the game, but either way, appreciate everybody for watching and supporting the show. The closest, though, gets a shout-out on tomorrow's show. Don't you dare cheat because we know that timestamp's going to show up if you do that after the game. This Tyrese Maxey shirt. It's fresh, has the 76ers logo on the front, zero maxi on the back, couple of colors too, black, blue. It was $40. It is now on sale for just $28, thanks to our friends at Fanatics. Be sure to use that link down below so that deal applies, but also so that Fanatics knows that Chat Sports sent you. It's very easy. Chatsports.com slash maxi. There's not a promo code at checkout. You just simply use that link. Sixers making an addition to their roster in signing Jeff Doughton to a multi-year contract. Producer Chip, he did the YouTube short on that on Monday. Michael Scotto with some of the news here. Philadelphia 76ers signed Jeff Doughton to a two-year deal. It includes a team option for the 2024-2025 season. So pretty much a deal for the rest of this year and then Player option on that second. Sixers coach Nick Nurse previously coached him with the Toronto Raptors, and they've since reunited in Philadelphia. He was undrafted in 2020 out of Rhode Island. Bounced around a couple of spots at the NBA level. Been with the Orlando Magic, Milwaukee Bucks, Golden State Warriors. As we said, he played for Nick Nurse in 2022 and in 2023. He was actually able to get some action the other night, and he played pretty good basketball, honestly. Um, who was it against specifically? He went 4 of 5 against Memphis and had 11 points. Thought he was pretty solid there and signed a two-way contract with the 76ers in March. Spent time with the Sixers G League team. Nine games played for the 76ers at the NBA level. Just a player who gives you some roster flexibility, and then you build up the back end of that roster if you so want to. His G League numbers, I always crack up 
at the G League numbers. The level of competition there just is not good. The G League Ignite, not even going to be a team anymore because the results have been so bad with players just really trying to build up their draft capital. 19 points per game, 5.5 assists, 49% from the field, almost 39% from three-point range. And then in those nine games with the Sixers, 12.5 minutes, 4.5 points, two-plus assists, Field goal numbers, solid 55.5% from the field, and then 50% from three-point range. Just some more quick thoughts on the signing, why the timing of this signing is important, and does Dalton have a chance to make this team next year? I think that player option, obviously pretty important in the equation. Yeah, and you know, I think really they wanted to sign him now so that they could have him available for the playoffs if they needed. You know, obviously Melton's injury, even if he comes back tonight, you never know when a back injury can flare up again. Lowry is an older player. Maxie's been dealing with injuries. So I think they just wanted somebody that clearly Nick Nurse trusts to be able to play spot minutes if he absolutely had to. I don't expect him to play in the playoffs, yeah, but if either. injuries happen and he absolutely has to, at least they have a, have a guy there. Interesting they chose to sign him instead of Ricky Council. So, you know, Ricky Council, not on a regular contract, won't be able to play in the playoffs. So they chose to go with Doughton. You know, will he be in the team next year? He, he could fight for a back end of the rotation spot. I, I do like what he's shown. He's smart. He can hit some shots and, and make some plays. But, you know, nothing special. Just a guy that Nick Nurse is familiar with that he knows can run a system. Every day that passes by is a good day to sign Ricky Council to a standard NBA contract. A lot of people know. A lot of people have been voicing this on social media. Nick Nurse, Daryl Morey, it's time. Another reminder, join the family, subscribe, turn on those notifications so you never miss a thing right here on 76ers. Now, for Chip, I'm Chase. See ya.